At the end of a jetty on the coast of Bangladesh, the sound of misery rises up above the wind and the waves. 140 men and boys have been caught by the Coast Guard. They're Muslims from neighboring Burma, and they're pleading and praying for their lives. <laughs> oh Allah, save us, save us, they cry. But the officers aren't listening. After weeks of violence in northwest Burma, Members of the Muslim minority, called the Rohingya, are trying to flee. But no one wants them. An officer takes photos. His colleagues hand out water and a packet of rice. And then they order the group back out to sea. <laughs> Their boats are leaking and they're badly overloaded, but it's not the voyage these men fear most. It's returning to Burma. <laughs> They'll kill me, says this man. An officer from the Coast Guard replies, Allah will save you. Now go back. In Burma's Rakhine state, the fires have been burning for weeks. Homes have been razed and lives taken by hate-filled mobs. Ethnic Buddhists and the minority Muslims blame each other for the violence, but the facts are hard to come by. International NGOs have pulled their staff out, too dangerous, they say, while Burma's government won't let independent observers in. Right now, the situation we're looking at right now on the ground is uh, it, it's, it's very, very difficult to get an accurate picture of, of what we're, what's actually going on. Information is scarce. But our camera team found people willing to talk. Rohingya refugees who'd made the crossing to Bangladesh, avoiding army patrols and the Coast Guard too. Some are hiding in farmer's shacks and others have been taken in by sympathetic locals. Our team spoke to one traumatized family not far from the coast. They told us they had suffered greatly in Burma. My sisters, brothers and other relatives were burnt alive. They burnt my own children. We couldn't bear it anymore, so we came to Bangladesh. The Coast Guard turned us back three times, and we floated at sea for four days and four nights, and then we managed to sneak in. Three of our children were burned to death in Burma. Another two died in the boat getting here. Like other Rohingya refugees, members of this family told us that policemen and members of the military in Burma took sides, participating in attacks on Muslims. Mohammed Islam says he saw a Burmese helicopter attack boats packed with refugees. There were three boats together when we set off, and another three followed us. The three boats that lagged behind were attacked by a helicopter and caught fire. He thinks almost 50 people were killed, although Burma has denied the allegation. The helicopter was circling in the sky. We saw something reddish fall on the boats, and instantly they exploded into flames. 300,000 Rohingya already live in Bangladesh, many in this desperately overcrowded refugee camp. And the government here says it won't take any more. The Rohingya are Burma's problem. But some have made it through, like these famished refugees eating rice on the floor of our team's hotel room. Everyone wants to take shelter in Bangladesh, but they can't get in. The police are everywhere. Mr. Shakur painted a distressing picture of his hometown, of residents and neighbors consumed by hate and bloodlust. They slashed our children. They put a sharp sword on the ground. They held infants above the sword and let the infants fall on it. They killed the babies that way. Did you see this happen? We asked him. 
Yes, I did. I saw it with my own eyes. They are shocking allegations, but is anyone prepared to listen? Burma's opposition leader, Aung San Suu Kyi, was fated in Europe for her stand against the country's military leaders, but she chose not to speak up for the Rohingya last week. She said she didn't know whether they were Burmese. We don't know what happened to the men and the boys we filmed on the jetty in the Bangladeshi town of Teknaf. A local contact said five of the boats pushed back into the sea had disappeared by the next morning. But like much of the testimony we've heard, we've been unable to verify it. It's a catastrophe for a little-known group of people that nobody seems to want. Only dialogue and generosity and human decency will prevent further loss of life.